Anyway, welcome to the third back-to-back -back, uh, NANOG Aaron meeting. This is NANOG 32, Aaron 14. And a uh, little thing about attendees. Uh, we're looking at registration figures from yesterday. We have about 170 people uh, registered for the Aaron meeting and approximately 600 people registered for the NANOG meeting. Uh, those are all both very, very good numbers. And as you would suspect, some people are going to both and uh, right now we think it's somewhere around 95 people are going to both meetings. What I don't have a statistic on is how many of that 95 is the first time that they may have been to a NANOG meeting but have been to Aaron meetings before or the first time that they've been to an Aaron meeting but have been to NANOG meetings before. I don't have that but still uh, that's a significant number of people that are going to both. Uh, just a reminder, if you're not registered for Aaron 14, which starts on Wednesday, uh, we have registration today from 8 till 5 and tomorrow from uh, 3 to 5. Registration desk is on this level. Uh, it's actually almost opposite from this room. Uh, at the Aaron 14 meeting, we'll be discussing these policy proposals. Uh, this is where you get to decide how IP addresses are allocated and uh, data about them is maintained and so uh, if you are not going to be here I encourage you to uh, get on the webcast uh, we will also have a interactive chat capability for those people that are uh, not present so that they can uh, participate in the uh, discussions as well and uh, the text uh, for these policy proposals is online at the uh, uh, URL that I have uh, listed uh, we've got a couple BOFs going on tonight. Uh, we have a BOF that begins about at 9 p.m. after the beer and gear. And this is your chance to come and offer suggestions as to how Aaron can take your input and expertise and put it into the uh, items I have listed here. And so uh, if you don't do too much beer and gear uh, and uh, are back from dinner and everything else like that, I would definitely encourage you to attend uh, this evening's BOF at 9 p.m. particularly if you're not going to be here later in the week. Then tomorrow night uh, we've got uh, a, a tutorial beginning at 5 on how to request, implement, and manage Aaron certificates. Uh, as you may be aware, Aaron recently established a certificate authority and we are now uh, using certificates to uh, authenticate people making changes to our database. And in addition, at 6 p.m. tomorrow, we're having a policy proposal BOF. We've done this in the past. It's an excellent opportunity for you to air an idea for a uh, policy without having to make a formal proposal on the mail list. It's a good opportunity if you've got an idea to throw it out for discussion and get some input back and feedback that uh, may help you to uh, make it into a stronger uh, uh, policy or may be some guidance that where you can see a policy might have to be changed. So I encourage you to uh, come to those as well. Also, uh, beginning tomorrow, we will be conducting an election for the address supporting organization of ICANN for the address council. Uh, we have one seat open in the uh, Aaron region. It's a, a three year term which will uh, commence on the 1st of January of 2005. If you're registered for NANOG 32, you can vote in this election. That is the only qualification. And the polls will open at 9 o'clock tomorrow and will be closing at 5 p.m. Uh, there will be further details tomorrow morning when I make this announcement again, uh, but all voting will be uh, done uh, online and so you'll be able to sit here in the morning and eating your donut and uh, drinking your coffee. Go ahead and vote. There are five people trying for one seat. Uh, their bios are available at the URL that's listed below. The uh, current incumbent is Eric Decker. He is not running for the seat again. So uh, you may know some of these people. Uh, if you don't, uh, please uh, go and uh, check out the bios. And with that, I'll say thank you and uh, turn it over to Rich. Rich. Is it my laptop? 
Good morning, I'm Rich Glella on behalf of uh, America Online. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Nanog 32 Aaron 14 conference. Uh, here in beautiful Reston, I'm Director of Architecture and Backbone Networking for America Online. So, I am. So, I want to start off with a bunch of thanks. First of all, to Susan, to the Merritt and Aaron staffs. It's a huge undertaking to put this on three times a year, um, and I think it's of great value to the community. So, uh, thank you for doing it again. Uh, the next person I'd like to thank is Teresa Gurney, who's the point person for my team. She's one of my network architects, and she has done a tremendous amount of work for AOL to, to help Susan make this happen. And I'm going to make you stand up. She's in the back of the wireless table. Yay! And she's done such a great job that she's now the person we'll go to every time. That's uh, No good deed goes unpunished. I'd also like to recognize our corporate events folks. We have a great corporate events department. Uh, Catherine, Jennifer, and Rachel have uh, uh, done a lot of work in helping us uh, put on things like the, uh, the reception last night. So they've done a great job for us. On the network side, there are a number of people who have defined and put together the network. And these are the people that are uh, have agreed to provide 24-7 pager service should something go wrong. So anybody who volunteers to have their you know, pager go off yet another day, um, I certainly uh, want to thank them for that. And none of this would go off without a whole host of other volunteers. So we have you know, a ton of folks from across the AOL organization, whether it's internal computing department, uh, our own networking department, our systems operations folks. Uh, a, a great turnout. Our uh, colleagues from Time Warner Cable, who Ron will talk about uh, Time Warner Cable in a little bit. Uh, who are helping co-sponsor this with us, and uh, and even our folks from Juniper, one of our router vendors. I should point out that all of our support people are wearing this beautiful dark blue fleece with the uh, with the uh, logo up here. So if you see anybody wearing this fleece, which I'm modeling for you, uh, feel free to to uh, you know pull them aside if you need something. Uh, we'd like to make the event go as smoothly as possible. So if you do need something, just contact any one of us. Uh, the obligatory network slide. The um, connectivity for the uh, for the conference is via DS3 from the DMARC room here in the hotel out to the nearest HDN pop, which is also here in Reston. Uh, there's you know switches distributed around. There's a couple on either side of the ballroom. There's one back for the media folks uh, in the back of the room. There's one for the air and office, and there's one for the terminal room. Uh, it's pretty generic stuff. Um, you guys like to. Trace out and do whatever you can do that. Please don't try and break things. There's probably a number of people in this room who can, uh, but please don't. So when thinking about, as the time got nearer for the, for the conference, I was thinking, you know, it, it just so happens that this is the prime uh, fall foliage season here in the sort of middle Atlantic seaboard area. So if, if you're familiar with this area, you know that it's a sort of a minor thing that goes on all the time. Local news stations sort of have a, a foliage alert. And um, it's really worth seeing if, if you've got the time. Um, I'd recommend if you you know if you go outside, you can see some of the trees around here are turning already. So you need yellows and you know purples, and reds, and you know burnt orange. Uh, we're a little we're about three weeks behind the higher elevations, which we sort of refer to as mountains. They're uh, <laughs> west of here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, they're a couple thousand feet higher in elevation than we are here. So if you have about a day or so, it's, it's really sort of a day trip, I'd recommend and not, of course, skipping any of the meetings. Mm -hmm. I'd, recommending, I'd recommend taking the drive. It's about two hours west of here. Go out to the uh, Shenandoah National Park, and through the park there's uh, the Skyline Drive, which is a two-lane road, top speeds, 35 miles an hour. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, there's some information here on the, uh, on the slide about you know, where you can go to uh, find additional information. Um, I have a uh, booklet with me on circuit hikes, so if you're inclined to do some hikes down there, uh, just come see me and you can flip through the book. Uh, it really is something worth seeing. Here's some examples uh, from the Shenandoah National Park in years past. Um, there's really a lot of opportunity to see you know, just beautiful fall colors. Uh, I highly recommend it. And you might even see some fauna along with your flora. So that's it.
Thanks, and uh, I'll turn it over to Ron. Director of Broadband Technology there. Um, to add to Ray and uh, Rich's welcome, I'd like to extend a welcome to you here for, Air, uh, for NANOG and those staying for the duration of the week, also for the Aaron meeting. Um, to add to uh, Rich's list of thank yous, um, in particular, I also want to point out uh, from AOL, Teresa Dietrich Gurney, who's done a fabulous job um, with spearheading the, in, in making this whole meeting a success, so thank you. Now, Rich had the uh, privilege of talking about no content. <laughs> I thought um, by representing our, our company, I should at least talk a little bit about the company we both work for. Uh, Time Warner, uh, which um, came together uh, in 2001, bringing uh, AOL and Time Warner Cable together uh, under the merger then, is a leading global media and entertainment company providing film, interactive services, television networks, cable systems, and publishing. You can see there uh, AOL and Time Warner Cable listed in the icon list. Um, notably absent here, because we get asked this all the time, is Time Warner Telecom. Time Warner Telecom, believe it or not, is not part of this conglomerate. Um, but Time Warner has some sort of, uh, has, has, has some investment in the company. So I, the way I describe it is uh, AOL and Time Warner Cable are like cousins, and Time Warner Telecom is the neighbor of our uncle. So that's the relationship. Uh, Time Warner Cable specifically has uh, corporate and engineering offices in Stamford, Westminster, um, uh, Charlotte, and then also here in Herndon. Um, uh, Time Warner Cable offers, offers services in 27 states, uh, video, high-speed data, and uh, just recently voice products. Some interesting networking stats there. Uh, we manage a, a pretty large uh, collection of CMTSs, that's the provider edge basically for the cable infrastructure, and hundreds of routers. A little bit about um, about Time Warner's Time Warner's uh, infrastructure. I thought I'd share that. Uh, might be interesting to the audience here. Um, our hybrid uh, fiber coax plant is comprised of basically fiber nodes. A fiber node is a, um, uh, a a location within neighborhood that is comprised of uh, six fibers and some coaxial plant that services 500 homes. Forty of those nodes are aggregated together into what we call distribution hubs, which are serving uh, 20,000 homes fast. Uh, these distribution, home, uh, di distribution hubs are further connected by a combination of uh, uh, rings and linear spans of fiber um, into a central location called the head end. Head end density uh, typically is, is providing services to half a million subscribers um, and represents uh, a major metropolitan or a metropolis. In, in the larger locations, we have um, multiple head ends or, or larger head ends. Head ends are further collected uh, into regional rings. Um, in the past uh, 18 months, we've deployed um, a combination of IRUs and, and Lambda services uh, with 32 channels of 10 gig in these, um, in these locations in, in sort of the mid, uh, central Midwest, uh, California, Texas, uh, New York, Ohio, and, and the Carolinas to um, collect those head end uh, uh, distribution plants together and, and provide connectivity between our, our, um, our head ends. And then this is where, um, this is, you know, what, why is AOL and Time Warner Cable here doing this together? Why are we jointly sponsoring this? And, and um, there's a number of things that we've come together and worked on um, since the merge in 2001. And in particular, uh, one of the benefits for the conference here is, is, uh, is the ATDM backbone. And uh, Time Warner Cable was a, a large investor into the backbone. Following the merger, you know, we, we looked at it at, uh, at the networking re uh, requirements for the company and, and um, by bringing the two companies together, we've, we've been able to realize uh, some substantial um, benefits by um, building this backbone and, and it, in fact, has created the, the, the first uh, non-facilities-based tier one uh, backbone in the U.S. Um, time Warner Cable further, so that, that, that infrastructure is used to interconnect our regions. Um, it's also used by a number of the other subsidiaries within the Time Warner family for connectivity and, and uh, amongst ourselves and also in and out of uh, the rest of the the industry. Time Warner Cable further augments that for some specific uh, uh, content. For example, our CLEC partners for uh, telephony handoff. 
So again, welcome. Um, I wanted to point out if you're looking for MPLS, you're in the wrong place. Uh, the MPLS conference is downtown in the Omni, uh, the Omni Hotel, and uh, for, a, for a hefty $1,500, you can relocate yourself there. Thank you. We would love um, to uh, try to work it so that MPLS would be some week and we would be some other week. So if you have clout with that organization, let them know. I, I, I've done that and uh, you notice we're still on the same week. So my name is Susan Harris. Here's where we are today as far as numbers. We have the usual dismally low percentage of women that never seems to go up. But we do have a fabulous woman host here. I believe we mentioned Teresa Dietrich Gurney a couple of times here, but she has been wonderful. And the, the small numbers has one advantage, the, the Net Girls mailing list, which I would be glad to tell you about if you don't know, is uh, organizing a lunch today, so meet down in the lobby at noon if you are interested in going, and if you are not a man. <laughs> um, so more... Um, Asia-Pacific people here than I've seen before, more African um, representatives, and in fact the highest number of non-U.S. people I've ever seen at a meeting. And here's where you come from. Note the dominant figure at the bottom. Here's what you do. When you registered on the web, you told us about your occupations, a nice high percentage of ISPs here today. A couple of minutes on what's available for you on the NANOG web. Most of the web pages I'll be talking about are linked right off the main page or are <coughs> one step away. Notably, an email FAQ that a group of us put together a couple of years ago. We had wonderful people contributing, really good answers to the stuff that we discuss often, to the stuff that we've discussed so often we really don't want to hear about anymore. And also, interestingly, there are answers to off-topic questions here. The Nanog talks are linked almost back to the beginning of time by subject, author, meeting, Thanks in large part to Barry Green of Cisco, we've beefed up our security curriculum quite a bit in the last few years, and these talks are also indexed. They're divided on the page by tutorial and by general session talk. ISP resources page, tools, um, looking glasses, links to ways to join mailing lists and so on. Thanks to those of you who have contributed to this and who've made corrections and keep them coming, please. The program committee has come up with some guidelines for those of you interested in presenting a talk at NANOG. Um, so take a look at this page and you are assured of success. Speaking of talks, uh, the slides for all of the talks are available on the web, but they won't be visible to you until um, the speaker is just about to speak. And they're linked, as this subtle black arrow tells you, they're linked off the uh, agenda page. And speakers, if you're um, listening and you have a Macintosh, do test your machine, please. Um, the, the man who's just leaving the room back there is the person to see, Jeff. Sometime during a break, come check your laptop. Jeff Tomaszewski's the, the person to see. And speaking of the back of the room, I don't know if the word merit has come up yet this morning, but that's where I work. That's where most of these people sitting in back work. Merit is um, Michigan's R&E network. We're based at the University of Michigan, and um, aside from our state activities, connecting most of the schools and colleges to the internet, NANOG is an outgrowth of a project we led late 80s, uh, early 90s, the prototype of today's internet called the NSFNet. So, as you're wandering around, you've noticed uh, buttons on people's badges. If you would like one for your very own, there are some available out at the registration desk. 
And now my turn to say thank you, and um, especially for that fabulous party last night. Thank you, everyone from AOL. That was wonderful. And Open Bar is... And Open Bar is something I don't think we've ever seen at Nanog. It was fabulous. Thanks, too, to the folks who will be feeding us at our breaks today, Foundry and Force 10. This level of support is wonderful for the organization. And to Joel, the only non-merit uh, person in back, Joel Yeagley hikes out from Eugene to do our multicast broadcast, and he's assisted by Cisco and ISC. Juniper provided our edge router for the meeting, as they did in May, and we're grateful for this support. Matt Weaver, who, I, as far as I can tell, knows everything, is handling all the services you see listed here. Uh, talk with him if you are interested, particularly in encrypting your wireless traffic using IPsec. He is available through our usual email address, which is um, sort of all over the web pages, and it is nanog-support at nanog.org. And here they are. These are the highly professional members of our program committee. Wow, you know, I had a new picture of Craig hugging that guy last night, you know, the, the running man, and it's in a different version of this talk that's sitting elsewhere on my laptop. So I'll make a big deal of uh, showing that picture later. Craig will be moderating tomorrow afternoon. He is a former Merit staff member who um, migrated a few years ago to a company called Arbor Networks, which is in Ann Arbor. Bill Manning will be moderating tomorrow morning. Bill's at the University of Southern California, uh, known to many of you for his work at IETF for uh, co conservation of IP numbers and coordinating exchange point work. Sue Harris is leading off this morning. Sue actually led the meetings that were the forerunner of NANOG. Those were known as the regional text meeting. She also migrated from Merit a few years ago, started a company, Next Top Technologies, uh, which she's now CTO of. And Steve Feldman will be on hand this afternoon. As you remember, he was our host in May. Steve is famous for his role in the mid-90s, building and managing the first exchange point, one of the first exchange points, uh, May East. A couple of changes. You um, will notice discrepancies between the printed agenda and what's on the web. You know we have an extra long lunch today, and tomorrow afternoon um, many of the talks have been moved up a half hour due to a couple of cancellations. This is my last slide, uh, but it's a serious warning. If you are using uh, your laptop to send data to your home networks, which of course you are, do not, you must not, be sending passwords in the clear. You know how easy they are to pick up, and we've demonstrated that before here and at IETF. There's absolutely no problem at all for someone to pick up your password if you're sending it in plain ASCII. You should be using some kind of application level encryption, SSH or a VPN client is what we recommend. Um, so do be very cautious about that. And uh, that's all I have.